Hi, my name is Paul Grogan, and in this Gaming Rules video, I'm going to be giving you an overview of Mythic Battles Pantheon, which is a scenario-based tactical miniatures game set in the world of Greek mythology. Take control of one of the gods such as Zeus or Athena, along with heroes like Odysseus and monsters such as the deadly Medusa. You must use the individual abilities and powers of each character in order to claim victory over your opponents. There are a number of ways to play Mythic Battles Pantheon. In skirmish mode, you will choose one of the game boards and are trying to absorb the power of recently fallen gods. You win a skirmish by your god absorbing the power within four Omphalos, or defeating your opponents. Skirmish can be played with two, three or four players, either every god for themselves or in teams. In scenario mode, you will play one of the specific scenarios for a particular game board, and each scenario requires different tactics. For example, in one scenario using the Styx map, Ares is attempting to seal access to the underworld, while Hades is doing everything in his power to prevent it from happening. And finally, campaign mode, which is a series of linked scenarios where the results of one will impact on the next. Each unit in the game is represented by a highly detailed miniature. Associated with the mini is the unit's dial, which shows their current combat statistics along with their abilities and powers. As a character becomes wounded, the dial is rotated, revealing new stats. Let's take a quick look in more detail at the Medusa. The top number is her attack rating, followed by her defence rating, and then the range of her attack. The Medusa uses a bow, so has a range of two. Next are the powers available to her, and the icon here means that she can use her petrification power shown on the bottom of the dial. Then we have movement, and finally vitality, which is how many wounds she can take before being killed. On the left are her abilities. Harassment and initiative give her a bonus in close combat, and climbing allows her to move onto parts of the map which are normally inaccessible. Moving onto this large rock, for example, is not possible unless the unit has the climbing ability, and being on the rock increases her attack rating and range. And finally, her petrification power turns her enemies to stone. Also included in the game are troops, which are represented on the board by multiple miniatures, but these are a lot weaker than heroes and monsters. Your deck of cards is key to the game. It's made up of a number of cards for each of your chosen units, and some Art of War cards too. You start the game with three cards from your deck, and then add another three Art of War cards into your hand. To activate a unit, you must play the corresponding card from your hand, and the first time you do this, you place the unit on the board. Normally, you may only activate one unit per turn, but if you play an Art of War card, you may then play a second, different unit card to activate a second unit. The Art of War cards have other uses too. You can play one of them to draw two cards from your deck, and they are also required by some of the unit's powers. Athena, for example, has a Strategist power, which requires two Art of War cards to use. Your Art of War cards are a very valuable resource, and you must use them wisely. Once a unit has been placed on the board, activating it again allows you to perform any two different simple actions. A simple action is to either move, attack, or pick up an Omphalos. The only combination of actions that is not allowed is attacking and then moving away, as heroes are not cowards. Alternatively, the unit could perform one special action instead, such as to run, which moves one extra space, or a god could absorb the power of an Omphalos, one of the goals of the skirmish game. When you attack another unit, you roll a number of combat dice equal to your attack rating. So for Athena, this is 6. Each die has one blank side and then results of 1 to 5. You're looking to get values equal to or higher than the target's defence rating, which, for example, on Zeus, is currently 7. 
So, how do you get a 7 when the highest result on a die is a 5? Well, the game uses an interesting and clever system, where you can discard any of your dice with a number to increase the value of another die by 1. And then any die that is then a 5 is re-rolled and added onto the total. So, for example, I roll 6 dice. First, the one with the blank side is lost and discarded with no effect. I then decide to use one of the other dice to increase my 4 to a 5, so I now have two 5s. I can then re-roll the two 5s and I roll a 1 and a 4. They are added to the previous result, giving me now a 6 and a 9. I can then discard one of my other dice to add one more to the 6, giving me a 7 and a 9, which is two hits. My last dice is wasted. Zeus has been wounded twice and his dial is rotated down two steps. I hope you found this video useful in giving you a brief overview of the core mechanics for Mythic Battles Pantheon. If you like what you've seen here, please consider subscribing to my channel and checking out some other of my videos. Until next time, take care and thanks for watching.